Bridget, there's a hole in this ice bag. Yeah, there's a hole in this ice bag. Was this a setup? I'm going to need some more ice. Now I have cold water all over me. <clears throat> Was this April Fool's? I got the best bag. I thought I could Yeah, buy. yeah. Find one without a hole for me while you're at it. Here you go. <clears throat> I'm sorry. <clears throat> no, put some ice in it. This is handing me an empty bag. Saints, I appreciate you joining me in this unexpected live. I want to talk to you about suffering, pain, and struggle, and the necessity of those things on the road to victory. <clears throat> Recently, I had a fight that was scheduled in Florida, which I, I've just finished up with the fight. Everything leading up to that fight was bad. Every sign told me to stop. Every sign told me things were going wrong. Now, I think most people would have thought twice. So for example, I first had to go on a trip. And when I was on this trip, I knew I needed to train for my boxing match. And so I went in the gym to you know run a couple miles, do some shadow boxing, do some weights, and there happened to be a bag. So, and I didn't have my gloves, so I started hitting the bag and then my hands started splitting open. So the, the skin tore up on my hands and they started bleeding, so I eventually stopped. So now I had all these cuts on my knuckles. So when I finally got back to Las Vegas, I couldn't actually go to the gym and do proper boxing exercises. So I was like, all right, let me actually just maintain my cardio. Then I had to go on a trip to Texas to look at an automobile. So I did that which took me outside of the boxing gym. Plus I couldn't put on gloves because my hands would bleed inside of the gloves due to all the cuts that I had. So I couldn't really train in the gym. I couldn't do the necessary sparring as I usually do leading up to a fight. And in my head, I was like, damn, I'm doing all this traveling. I'm getting stiff, sitting on these airplanes. My hands are cut up. I can't work with my trainer. But I was like, nah, just keep going, quiet, just keep going. So then, we eventually, after being in Texas, we fly to Florida for the fight. All this time, I'm having to cut weight while traveling and doing all these other things, business and things like that. So I'm having to lose like 12 pounds. Now, if you know me, on a regular basis, I'm in great shape. I have very little body fat. So when I'm losing 12 pounds, to take 12 pounds out of someone who is in great physical condition is very painful, right? So... I had to take 12 pounds out of muscle, 12 pounds out of skin and bones. And when you take a lot of pounds out, you're not only losing muscle and a little bit of fat, you're also dehydrating. And when you dehydrate, the, the liquid that's around your brain becomes lessened. So when you get punched, you're more likely to become concussed, right? You're more likely to get a headache. You're more likely to fatigue more quickly. <clears throat> so I'm cutting weight, doing two a day workouts, three a day workouts, even while I'm traveling. Then I get to Florida. It's the day before the fight. I'm still three pounds overweight. Most people the day before the fight are like, oh man, I'm not going to work out. I'm just going to let my body recover, relax my mind, get a massage, go to the sauna, let my body rest from the torture it's been going through from the weight cut, from the constant exercising. But me, I still had three pounds to lose and I hadn't been eating. So I've been working out during a caloric deficit, meaning I had no calories to burn, no real energy. I'm just running on fumes. So last night at 12 a.m., I'm fucking working out like a madman trying to get off these last three pounds. I got off about two pounds. Then I woke up in the morning and I was able to cut out a, a little more weight. So I had weighed less than I've ever weighed as an adult. I got down to um, 106, was it 160, 160, 66. 66. I got down to 166 pounds, which is very far away from my walk around weight, right? So when I got to the actual venue where we were boxing, I weighed in, weighed at 166. I was like, all right, fantastic. But I felt weak and fatigued before the fight even started because the I already worked out earlier in the day at 12 a.m. and only got about six hours of sleep. I get to the venue, I'm already tired, but F it, I suit up. 
Here's the other thing. I showed up without a trainer, without a coach. All I got is my expert promoter, Bridget. So it's me and Bridget there. We got to hustle up a trainer, hustle up a coach on the spot. Now, mind you, when you stay positive and you stay determined, you will make a way for yourself. So I'm there. I show up in my Jalaba, which I'm wearing now. Everyone else is in boxing gear, all their branded gym stuff with their trainers, their cut man, and all these other cats surrounding them. And I'm like the only out of towner. And I'm wearing this. And it's just me and Bridget. And so I, I walk by to go get weighed in and I see a, a older black guy and he, he, he says, hey, what's up, man? And just seemed like he was attracted to me for some reason. I weigh in and then I come back out and he's like, oh, hey, hey, how you doing? When do you fight? And it, it just seemed like there was some level of attraction for some reason. So I sit down and we start chopping it up. Turns out he's a veteran trainer and an excellent, very well-respected former fighter. Older guy, he's 74 years old now. And he starts talking to me and he was like, hey, man. You play football, you play basketball, you play all that shit. This you don't play. This is a rumble. You got to go in there mean. You got to go in there to kill a motherfucker. And he just starts telling me all of this brutal shit, which is good because I need to get in the right mindset because I felt so physically drained from the weight loss. You hear me? And then he starts telling me about his experience as a trainer, his experience as a boxer, as, as he's talking – Tons of people are walking by greeting this man. You could tell he's a man of respect in Tampa, Florida. Then he says, you know, he's like, yeah, man. And before I start boxing, before I start boxing, I had a lot of money, man. I had Tampa on lock. And I'm not talking about it as a, as a drug dealer. He said, I'm talking about the pimping. And I'm thinking, oh, shit. This was meant to be. He says, yeah, man, I had about 13 girls. And this is when the, the golden era of pimping. This is before the drugs. So girls like to be hoes because the hoes look good. They dressed up. Everybody wanted to be a pimp a, a, or a player or a hoe. It was that era before the crack, before the drugs. He was like, yeah, man, I was like the king pimp, 13 girls. I was like the only black man who had money because you got to remember this is before we had the right to vote. This is many years ago when there was serious racism and Jim Crow in the South. He was like, yeah, man, I was pimp and had 13 girls of every flavor. And I thought, oh, that's fascinating. Man started with the pimping, then turned into a great boxer. Now he's a great trainer. And for some reason, some law of attraction, he decided to just sit down next to me and start a conversation with a stranger. After our conversation, I said, uh, hey, man, if you want to work my corner, I definitely would appreciate it. It's just me and uh, promoter extraordinaire over here, Bridget. And let me tell you a little bit more about the struggle I had to undertake just to get there. Not only was it the fucking weight cut, not only was it the constant traveling, sitting on them bullshit ass spirit flights, having my back hurting because I've been going from city to city, state to state. I get to, to um, Florida and then Bridget asked me, hey, where's your license? Where's your paperwork? Let's get ready. Get everything ready for the fight. And I say, damn, I don't have my boxing license. Do you know that Bridget said you don't have your license? Booked a goddamn flight right then and there and flew to Las Vegas. Got my boxing license and then flew to Florida the same day just to help me get in this goddamn match. You can't find that everywhere, folks. That's dedication. And that was one thing that would have made most people give up or say, hey, it's a harbinger of doom. It's another sign you shouldn't be doing this. Here's another fucked up part. So she gets back. She got my boxing license and she says, hey, your physical is out of date. You need a physical from a doctor. This is Friday night. The fight is Saturday morning. It's like 5 p.m. She schedules me an appointment to go to CVS. I go to CVS. They agree to do a sports physical. She says, well, what sport is it? I say boxing, the sweet science. She says, we don't do boxing physicals. It's too, it's too violent. We'd have to take an EKG and do all this other wild shit. We don't do it. Too much liability. I'm over here like, ain't this some bullshit? I must not be meant to knock this motherfucker out. Then she says, but there's a place down the road that you can go to. At this point, I'd already spent $100 in Ubers just getting around trying to get the physical. The one place I took the appointment said they can't do it. So then I got to walk down the fucking block a couple miles to get a physical, hopefully. 
I show up as a walk-in at a urgent care. I tell them I need a physical. They're kind enough to give me the very last slot. They give me a physical. They approve the physical, which was a miracle because all I had eaten that day was a goddamn some oats, three crackers, a yogurt, and a cup of almond milk. All I had the whole day. So thank God my vitals were strong enough that they approved the physical. Then I said, okay, yet another obstacle, yet another piece of struggle that I've overcome so that I can box, even though I don't have to box. Most people fight because they have to fight. I just want to fight. Then I show up at the venue. No trainer, no cut man, no nothing. Don't know anybody there. Everyone else is prepared. And I just happen to be blessed that the most experienced trainer says, yeah, man, I want to I want to work with you. We happen to have a similar background. What are the chances of that? Very low. Then I start working mitts with a guy. I'm working mitts. I'm drenched in sweat. I'm exhausted by the time I'm done working mitts. I'm covered in motherfucking sweat, like completely drenched. I don't even feel good mentally and physically before the fight. I'm already fatigued. And that's because I lost so much weight. But I say, fuck it, hold it together. Then we walk to the ring. I get in the ring. I'm fighting a kid in his prime. You know what I'm saying? Kid in his prime. We get in there first round. I look all right. But at the end of the first round, I'm exhausted. Never happened before because I'm used to being in excellent shape. Then the second round, I look all right. Look pretty good. But the funny thing, I forgot to mention, when I got back to the corner after the first round, sit down on the stool after the first round, the coach says, you losing it, kid. You fucking up. You get it. You got to stay tight. Work the jab more. You losing it. Don't fuck this up, kid. And I'm thinking, oh, shit, I'm losing. I, I don't know what this is about. I kid you not. I never had second place in my whole life. I don't know what that's about. Going for the second round. Same thing. I felt like I was doing all right in the second round. I'm working the jab. I get off a few combinations. I don't get hit with anything, but I can feel my legs are going. My legs are turning into motherfucking jello, man. I'm trying to hold the dude. I throw a combination. Boom, 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 boom. Then I try to hold him just to get a little bit of air and to rest my legs. And this kid is strong because he didn't have to cut weight. He's fighting at his natural body weight and he's young. He's a spring chicken. He's in his prime. And he also does kickboxing and MMA. So he has good ability to move people around and shift weight. So when I try to hug him, he tries to throw me down during the second round. I make it out of the second round. I felt like I did all right. I sit down on my stool. My, my coach, the coach and the trainer say, you fucking it up, man. You're not throwing the one, two. You're not throwing them straight. You get in wild. You're too loose on the hooks. You fucking it up. You're going to fuck around and blow this. Come on, man. And I'm thinking, holy shit. I never lost before. I can't lose this. I get it. I get up off the stool after the third, after the second round, going into the third round. My fucking legs are jello. As soon as I get off of the stool, my first thought is, oh, shit. I could barely breathe. I, can't, I don't have no bounce in my step. I go in there. I'm trying to work the jab, but my, my back foot, I feel like I can't push off of it to extend forward to reach them. And they're telling me, throw the jab, double jab, triple jab. Now, I feel more comfortable as a counter puncher. But I'm trying to get out there to throw the double jab, the triple jab. I try to throw the, the jab. I get punched stiff. Now I'm dehydrated, which means there's not a lot of fluid around my fucking brain. So when I get hit, my brain's bouncing off the fucking inside of my skull. And it actually hurts. I've never been hit hard but once in my whole boxing career when I'm in a match. And that one time I got hit hard in Atlanta, I beat the shit out the boy's corner through in a towel after that. This time I couldn't snap to attention after I got hit hard. It's like he punched me hard and I was out on my feet. I could see him and I just tried to get distance and look good, look like I still have my shit together. He's coming in. I'm trying to counter punch him and I'm trying to hold him because I'm exhausted. I struggle through the whole third round trying to, and I'm pushing him back to the ropes, but he's two piece in me, three piece in me. I'm trying to move my head. I'm trying to counter punch, throw uppercuts, throw hooks, trying to throw some shit back. I'm mostly getting tagged. And I'm thinking, fuck, I'm losing this. I'm throwing punches, but they're wild. My equilibrium's off. I don't feel right. I never felt this bad in a fight. My legs are like lead. I'm trying to throw punches. 
Then I hear I don't even hear the clap clap for the 10 seconds remaining. I don't even hear that shit. I'm too intense trying to land some shit because I can't lose. And then I hear ding ding and the, the fucking whole shit is over. And I'm thinking, no, that can't be. It's over. I lost. I never lost. I lost. I go back to my corner and my coach says, I think you got it. I think you got it, but you fucked it up. I think you got it, but you fucked it up. It was all yours. You should have stayed calm. You should have stayed calm. But you you you, you might have fucked it up. I think you got it, but you fucked it up. You had this in the bag. He ain't got nothing on you. Why'd you stop working the jab? You went in there. You was working the jab round one. You was working the jab round two. Why'd you stop round three? Then the trainer says, yeah, man, you didn't even touch the body. You're supposed to play with him up top, bang him to the body. You didn't bang the body. And I'm thinking, oh, shit, I didn't lost this shit. This is the first loss of my fucking life. I can't do it. I can't lose. I don't know what that's about. So then I come into the center of the ring and the ref holds both your hands up. Everyone's cheering. But eventually after they hold both your hands up, they're going to drop one person's hand and say, this is the motherfucker that won. I'm so inside my head. They're holding up everybody's hands. And then they say, unanimous decision, victory, blue corner. And I'm so fucked up in the head. I don't even realize I am the blue corner. Unanimous decision, victory, blue corner. And I think, oh, shit, that's me. Okay, god damn it. We didn't want it. But here's the thing. I fucking lost. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I won. But I fucking, it was so painful. It was so painful to win. You understand? The struggle, not just the fight, everything leading up to the fight, the weight loss, the travel, the focus, my hands bleeding, not being able to get into the gym, not being able to work with a trainer, having to do it alone, working out in the morning, working out midday, working out in the middle of the night, trying to sweat out the goddamn weight, starving myself. The whole shit was painful. Then I get here. I find out my boxing license is all the way on the other side of the country. Got to go fly, get the license. Then I realize my fucking physicals expire. Got to go get a physical. They tell me they can't do it. Got to go to another place. Then I come back, still got to work out in the middle of the night when everybody else is trying to get a good night of sleep and rest up. Then I wake up and I feel like shit. And I never feel like shit when it's game time. There's usually a spirit that comes over me. The fucking spirit didn't come. I just had to fight based on determination, willpower, and discipline. Just the idea that I fucking want it. And I fought based on that. And that shit hurt. My fucking nose. Now, I'd have been punched in the nose a lot of times. And that's why you niggas don't know how pretty I used to be. Just imagine how pretty I used to be. But my fucking nose is hurting. I saw blood on the kid's shirt in round two. I thought it was his blood. I'm so arrogant. It was my blood. I'm not used to that. Then I get out the ring. Bridge is like, yeah, is your mouth bleeding? I was like, no, nah, that's from my nose. She's like, no, nah, that's definitely from your mouth. Nose bleed, mouth bleeding. But I won unanimous decision. Sometimes you win and it fucking hurts. But here's the thing. After that fight, I was so fucked up, man. I go and sit down. And while I'm sitting down, the coach and the trainer are talking shit to me. Yeah, I'm undefeated. Absolutely. Am I undefeated? Absolutely. The coach and the trainer talking shit to me. They saying, hey, man, you got it, but you didn't get it the way you could have got it. You got it out of, out the mud. You didn't have to do that. You got sloppy. I, I see that you had a good win, but it looked like you got tired. And God damn it, they're right. I'm never going to cut weight like that because I just ain't got the weight to cut. You know what I'm saying? That was not a great idea, but I survived based on the willpower. And I want you to know heaven is on the other side of hell. You got to go through hell. You got to struggle. Don't nobody win without getting touched, huh? Don't nobody get to the top of the mountain without going through shit on the way up, huh? Ain't nothing easy. I don't give a shit if you white, blonde, blue-eyed. I don't give a shit about white privilege. Ain't no white, blonde, blue-eyed people who have a billion dollars, made a billion dollars, or even maintain a billion dollars without people fucking with them, trying to take them out. Some of you are growing up. In the ghetto, thinking people outside the ghetto don't have struggles. Bullshit. Everybody got struggles. Nothing is easy. The world is challenging. The world will have challenge. But guess what? If you don't put yourself through challenge, when you experience challenge, you're going to fall apart. 
when I start taking them nasty ass punches, which I am not entirely familiar with doing, because in my matches, I usually don't get hit like that. But when I'm sparring in the gym, yeah, I get hit hard by heavyweights, people who weigh a lot more. So I knew what that was about. I knew that was a part of the road. I knew it wouldn't always be easy. And even though I got a unanimous victory, I got an ass beaten. I didn't feel good. Bridget talking about, hey, let's take a picture after the fight. I'm over like, I don't want to fucking take a picture with you. She's like, come on, we always take a picture. And I didn't want to, but I did take one. But that's how fucked up I was. You see what I'm saying? Victory hurts. Being a winner hurts. Like, being a fucking winner is pain. The happy part is saying I'm a winner, is knowing in my head that's who I am. Everything else is pain. Training, pain, the weight cut, pain, the mental turmoil, pain, the lonely nights, pain. It's saying you're a winner. That's a rare privilege. Shit. So I'm telling you, get your shit together, man. Stop complaining and bitching. Stop being soft. Life, you're not going to make it out of life alive. You're going to die. But the question is, will you live before you die. That's why people are often telling me, Marquette, why are you fighting? Why are you boxing? Because it's in the blood. Some motherfuckers are fighters. That's just what I am. So it's what I got to do. They say a man's got to do what a man's got to do. Know who you are. Do what you got to do. Don't go soft on yourself. If any doctor or any sane person knew what I'd been doing this whole week, I ate less food than Bridget ate this week. And then have the nerve to work out two and three times a day. Yeah. No one would recommend that. But you got to do that to get what you want. You got to grind to get what you want. This is a metaphor for life and success. To all the people who have super chatted, I truly appreciate it. Let me try to go back and acknowledge you real quick. Please forgive me because I can't scroll all the way back. Abdullah. Assalamu alaikum. I, I truly appreciate the, the super chat. I just wanted to share this inspiration with you guys while it's fresh. Because it's not every day a motherfucker get their ass whooped and won. That's a unique experience. You know what I'm saying? Sacrifice is key. I feel sorry for men who don't know how to box. Indeed. Man Friday. Appreciate the love. Might be in the UK or the EU. Appreciate the Euros. If I missed your super chat, just do it again. Like you don't have to super chat again. Just write that you super chat because I want to acknowledge you two times. Appreciate that. Truly, truly. I'm going to go back and try to read any of these questions. And let me tell you how classy the young man was that I was fighting because boxing is a gentleman's sport and boxing is not some cute shit, right? Like, like LeBron and Jordan, these motherfuckers get to go do their cute ass sport. They get to play that cute-ass game called basketball, which I love basketball. I rupture my Achilles tendon playing basketball. I fucking love it. It's cuter than a motherfucker, though, because they get to play their cute-ass sport and then be fine afterward. Just go home feeling great. This shit is some whole other shit. You know what I'm saying? You could win and look like you lost. This is some whole other shit. This is mental struggle, spiritual struggle, physical struggle. This is the whole package. This tests everything about you being a man. The reason I love this sport right here, the reason I love this sport is because it's not about you were born big and tall. It's, it's that you got a dog in you. You fight like a pit bull. This is the most fair sport on the planet Earth. They match up one man against another man that's the same size. You're both 165 pounds. You're both 200 pounds. And you get to go head to head and see who's a real dog. Yeah, this ain't that motherfucking bullshit where one nigga just happened to grow seven feet. What you gonna do with him? He's just too big. Basketball, some whole other shit. I love basketball, but there ain't nothing like the sweet science. There ain't nothing like it, man. And that's why I love bringing this to you guys. And shout out to um the cash app. Let me see who that was. See who that was. Tyree Brown. Appreciate that, Saint. But look, I was so fucked up after that boxing match, bro. My, my ass is sitting down trying to rehydrate because I'm completely dehydrated. My eyes closed. 
First round, this motherfucker bust me in the face and knocked out my eye contact. If you wear contacts, you know that when you have one eye contact in, it messes up your depth perception. So I got one contact in trying to box this motherfucker getting hit while dehydrated. Equilibrium is way off, but I'm still just trying to fight through this shit. And I can't go back to my corner complaining like, I lost one contact, take the other one out. No, we ain't got time for that shit. All we got time for is them to squirt some water in your mouth, tell you that you're fucking up and you need to go harder and send your ass back into war whether you want to go or not. This is not a motherfucking teammate sport. I don't get to tap LeBron in and say, all right, I'm tired. You go in. There's no teammate. There's no timeout. The only timeout is when your ass get knocked out. Otherwise, you got to go the whole fucking mile. You heard me? It's a no-quit sport. Actually, there was one motherfucker that did quit. When that, when that ding-ding went, he sat on his stool and didn't get back up. Disgrace. I respect everybody that stepped into a boxing ring. They a warrior. But I can't go out on the stool. I got to go out with my motherfucking teeth on the mat. That's just the way I'm built. And that's the way you should be built. Not everybody's going to be a boxer. But shit, I, I think it's a beautiful thing. I highly recommend you get your ass kicked every now and then. It builds character. The same, the center. What is your weight class? Also, who do you have winning between Charlo versus Canelo? I got Canelo in that one. I think Canelo learned a lot getting his ass whooped by Floyd. And my weight class is supposed to be at the at the least, it's supposed to be 175, light heavyweight. I fought at 165, which is way too low. I felt very bad. So I will never. Do that again. Eric Farmer, I appreciate the super chat. Truly. Let me see if I could pop you up, Eric Farmer. Appreciate that, Saint. And we have another super chat. Abdullah, appreciate that. So let me go back, hit some of these questions. Darlene, look at your fine self. Go ahead, chocolate. That chocolate thing. Appreciate the lady saints. Adversity fuels us. That's right, Saint Anthony. Good to see you. Sounds like some material for your next book. You know what? I would love to write a second book. You guys have really supported me on the first one. There's certainly a lot of things I have to do um, in between now and then. But uh, God willing, we will have a, a second and a third book. You good, bro. You seem out of it. Mozart Gates, I think I'm good. You never know, baby. But I tell you what, when I go into a fight, I like to think homicide or suicide, meaning somebody going to die. But look, it's either going to be suicide because I fought my fucking life out. I fought the life out of my body or it's going to be homicide. But somebody got to die. So I'm either trying to kill them or kill myself by working too hard. I feel fine right now. You're not going to get out of a boxing. Not for sure what that means. But hey, as long as you come back, that's the key. Get the likes up. Two, oh, actually, now 300 watching. So truly appreciate that. Am I undefeated? Yes. God is good. I am undefeated. Proud of it. And I hope to maintain that. Get the likes up. Agreed. Let me know when you want these hands. These cats are hilarious, aren't they? ATL Finest, I can tell you that I don't like to fight people I admire or respect. I would never even ask someone I admire or respect to spar or to fight because when I go in there, I want to hurt you. When I go in there, I try to go into a different mentality. I want to kill. And I would never want to get into a situation like that with someone I like or respect. So for the record, a lot of fighters follow me. Some of you may be better. Some of you may not be. But out of respect, please don't ask to spar me. Because to me, it's a fight. And I don't ask people I respect and admire to fight. The same, the center. Oh, yeah. Okay. I answered that one. Eat something already, pimp. You know, the funny thing is I did try to put some weight back on after the weigh-in. I started eating and I felt like I was going to vomit because my stomach shrunk so small due to the, the fasting over a, a long period of time. You a boxer, correct. Life and pain go together. We should embrace the pain. That's correct. And don't go soft. I almost went soft. I was in such a headache because I was dehydrated after the fight, massively dehydrated. And I said, Bridget, give me some some uh, some pain medication. I've never taken pain medication. I had my wisdom teeth come out. No pain medication. I had Achilles tendon surgery. 
no pain medication. My head was so messed up. I said, give me some pain medication. By the time she got back with it, I was like, no, nah, I can't take that. It's not me. It's not who I am. I don't do drugs. I don't do caffeine. I don't do soda. I don't do alcohol. It's not who I am. Stay strong. Don't ever get weak. Moment of weakness, but I stayed on who I am. The creed of the assassin. Be who you truly are. You are remarkable. Fight at natural weight. That is correct. <laughs> you got to fight at your natural weight. Man's a dope storyteller. I appreciate that. And it's easier to tell the stories when it's dead real. Life has drama if you're living it right. Life has excitement if you're living it right. Real talk, 24-7, 365. You just got in. Did he win, fellas? Yes, he did. He always wins. So far, so good. Daily struggle. Marquette, you're a legend, bro. Funny thing, Saints. Check this out. This is funny. This is how big the assassin is growing. Shout out to Tolu. I didn't tell anybody where I was boxing. I said in the state of Florida. No one knew where. I was walking up to get my gloves. And gentleman said, hey, are you the same the center? I said, yes, I am. And I introduced myself. His name is Tolu, Nigerian brother, one of the saints that follows the movement, part of the assassin. Just happened to be there with a friend of his who was fighting. And so that was a beautiful thing. It affirmed me. I take every positive sign that I can to keep going forward, even when it seems as though everything is against me. You have to look for what you want. If you want to win, you have to look for every piece of evidence that you're going to win and be successful. And I am always doing that. So I see some more super chats. Let me acknowledge those. Truly appreciate the love. Eric Farmer, appreciate that saying. Garo, life is suffering. No matter what, choose what you are willing to suffer, for there is no avoidance. Congrats, big homie. Thank you. That's right. Life requires suffering. Higher levels of success require suffering. We're in a society where people want to make lies. They want to make excuses. They want to kill pain. They want to use painkillers, not realizing pain is necessary. If you don't experience pain, how can you experience the fullness of pleasure, the fullness of happiness? Do you know how good food tastes when you've been starving for a whole week? Do you know how good water tastes when you've been dehydrating every day? Do you know how good it feels to take in sustenance after you just fought another man tooth and nail? with everything you had. Oh, it tastes so good. Victory, the taste is sweet. Yeah. Swiffer wet jet, straight inspiration. My war is different, but the struggle is the same. To all the saints, don't ever die not fighting to achieve your dreams. It's grind time. Wise words. And that's why I can identify so much with 50 Cent's album. Get rich or die trying. The get rich it might not be what it is for you. Fill in that blank with do whatever it is you want, your goal, or die trying. The stakes are that serious. Do not live on your knees. Live standing on your feet. Men stand tall. Suckers fall. Sometimes men fall, but men get up despite all. Yeah, it's real out here. Appreciate the, the super chats. If I missed your super chat, uh, do forgive me. Confidential rights. Of course, my boy won. True story. I am a winner. Couldn't imagine anything else. The, the, the concept of lo losing is devastating to me. I hope, I pray, I train that it never happens. It's very blessed and fortunate today. What's your opinion on starting multiple businesses at the same time? Would you stay focused on one at a time or work on multiple? Depends on who you are and what you're able to do. It depends on the team. If you got a team and you can put your team on it, you can make it happen. Very few things happen with you working in isolation. Today, I needed the men in my corner supporting me. First round, I won. They told me I was fucking up. Second round, I won. They told me I was fucking up. They were playing head games with me to make me go harder. Yeah, I needed that. They didn't let me relax or rest. If you got a team, you can win. If you got a team, you can do multiple things. Hey, I couldn't have even had this fight if Bridget wasn't here. I couldn't have done it. 
No way. I couldn't have even gotten the fight. I couldn't even have gotten in the fight. I couldn't have won the fight. You have to have support. No man is an island. Eric Farmer asked the question, but couldn't add it to my donation. Well, what the hell is the question? Type it again. If you saints see Eric Farmer's question, please retype it so that I may answer it. Now, let me go back up and see if I missed any super chat so that I can acknowledge those. Marquette, do you take protein or creatine for muscle recovery? I've been taking creatine. I want to say creatine might have been, um, there might have been some regulations against creatine in certain um, sports. I want to say in football, I used to play football. I feel like I've heard a lot of bad things about creatine. Um, so I, I've never gotten into that. I've never been a big supplement person. You really want your food to be your vitamins. I eat a lot of uh, sardines, which are a superfood. You really want to have that good mix of vegetables, fruits, and very good proteins, good fats, avocado, things like that. When you're using too many powders and supplements, you know, sometimes you're not really being sustained. Nothing will ever replace training hard, physically and mentally, and eating well. Nothing replaces that. There's no powder on earth. Don't take the shortcut. So definitely nothing wrong with a protein supplement. Creatine, I don't personally know any uh, great high-performance athletes that use creatine. It's a smart sport, bro. People act like boxing and MMA is barbaric, but it's super sophisticated. I totally agree. The guy who wins at boxing is never the big, strong, buff guy. It's the guy who is a tactician. When I was fighting, my corner was telling me, you're strong. Calm down. You don't need to swing so hard. Straight punches. It's about maintaining presence of mind and calmness, serenity in the fire, which is hard to do. It's emotional intelligence. And being that I hadn't been sparring a lot, I had so much trouble relaxing. And so it's definitely a mental sport. Pretty niggas box. Man, you don't remember Ali? You heard me? I remember there's this one cat named uh, Nick Noel from my hood. He was, a, he was a pretty boy, but one of the most thugged out cats I know. He ended up getting shot in the head. He got set up, you know, off, off some gang shit. Close one eye. Warrior mode, absolutely. And you got to stay in warrior mode. That's the key. What makes it easier for me to train is that I train on a consistent basis. So when it's time for a fight and I got to up it, I'm just increasing what I already know. When I was in the gym last night and I walked in that motherfucker, I felt like I was at home. I was like, this is where I live. I've been in here so much by myself every time. This is where I live. This is what I do. You had me the jump rope. You heard me? I just feel like you, you didn't put the power in my hands. It just feels so familiar. And that's how you got to be when you want something. You got to breathe it. Salute, London in here, church, lots of cats in the UK in the movement. The key to success is keep fighting and never give up. If that ain't the realest stuff I ever heard, keep fighting. How do you prevent employers from abusing you? Well, if you ask me, the key is not to be an employee or to go where you are appreciated. The higher your skill is, when you have rare skills, people are going to show you appreciation and respect. When you are easily replaceable, aka you do a job that's easy for somebody else to do, you'll never get respect. Your employer will never treat you well. It applies widely to life. If you are not a uniquely valuable person, your woman will not treasure you. She will not sacrifice for you because she knows she can get another of you. Just like Kanye said, bitch, it's a million of you. It's only one of me. So the key is to be a great man where you can tell anyone, whether it's a woman, an employer, there's only one of me. That's the goal, to be remarkable. True indeed, I love boxing. I love winning. I love winning. And, and I want you guys to know that's a part of success. You got to love winning. A lot of people sent me notes, hey, good luck. Hey, wishing you well on the boxing match. This one dumb bitch sent me a message. I swear to God, it said the following. Hey, good luck. Hope you win. But if you don't win, I hope you don't get hurt much. I text that dumb bitch back and I said, 
I only win. Don't you ever message me anything other than victory. I don't understand anything other than victory. Dumb bitch. I should have blocked the dumb bitch because her mindset is a loser. You cannot hang around losers. They think in terms of their reality. I'm a winner. I would never text someone talking about if you lose. What in the fuck kind of thinking is that? No such thing as if you lose. I'd rather die. I'd rather die. Dumb bitch. Chutch. The big homie. Loma or Lopez. You know what? Lomachenko, and I want to speak up on this for all of the folks who follow boxing. Lomachenko has been overrated. They they rated Lomachenko over um, Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford has more fights and he's undefeated, whereas Lomachenko has fewer fights and he's been defeated before, yet they ranked him above Terrence Crawford, which lets you know how the bookmakers in Vegas have some strange biases. Now, I think if they matched up Terrence Crawford and Lomachenko, the bookmakers are going to put Terrence Crawford at a disadvantage, which means if you put your money on Terrence Crawford, you got a good bet you might make a killing because I think he'll whoop Lomachenko's ass. Now, in terms of Loma and Lopez, I'm not very familiar with Lopez, but I know he's tough. I've seen him fight. He's a strong fighter. The Latino fighters, they can take punishment. They can keep walking you down. So I know he's going to go the whole mile, but I don't think he'll be able to get as crafty as uh, Lomachenko. It's good to get your ass kicked. Dude crazy in a good way. You're right. You got to get your ass because I ain't never lost a fight on the streets. Nowhere near it. I've only lost a... Shit, I ain't even lost a fight to a professional fighter. Shit. I had my ribs broken, though, in the front and the back. Had my nose bloodied up a couple times. And I need that. You heard me? Because even though I'm a winner, I need to take those small L's on the road to success. It builds character. Because, look, here's the thing. Here's the thing. People say Floyd Mayweather doesn't have a chin because they never seen him really get hit. But what they don't realize is that a real fighter is getting hit all the time because in the gym, you're bleeding in the gym so that you don't have to bleed when the bright lights are on, when the real match occurs. So what people don't realize is, yeah, Floyd got a chin. He couldn't get to where he is without a chin. He wouldn't survive all that sparring in the gym without a chin. Because when you spar, you spar people bigger, stronger, and faster than the guy you're going to fight in the ring. Oh, yeah, and I forgot to tell you how classy the young man is that I was uh, fighting. He's so classy after the fight, he comes into the locker room where I was and sits down next to me. He says, hey, man, I looked you up before the fight, and I see that you're an entrepreneur. Do you have any advice for a young guy who wants to be an entrepreneur? So I chopped it up with him a little bit. Very classy of him, one, because he lost the fight. So classy of him to, to, you know, have the confidence to come talk to me. And also very classy because when you fight a motherfucker, a lot of people don't want to have casual conversation afterwards. You know what I'm saying? So very classy move. Shout out to the young man. Um, and I hope he stays in contact because I admire that a lot. Real gentleman. Now I can tell you when we're in there throwing hands, motherfucker tried to bust my shit up and tried to throw me to the ground a couple of times when I locked him up. He was real vicious when we we're fighting. And that's why I tell people, don't ask me to spar you. Because I'm going to try to fuck you up. You hear me? So you can ask me to spar you if you want. I'm going to try to beat the shit out of you. And after we get out of the ring, you ain't going to want to be friends. <laughs> ask me to, These little niggas ask me to spar. I'm sorry. I don't even want to say that word. Only thing I don't like about boxing is the head damage. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's for real savages. You're right. I was super middleweight and went up to light heavyweight. <laughs> I might have to do the same thing, chap. You okay, bro? You don't look good. That might be because I'm missing my facial hair, man. That might be because I'm missing the facial hair. <laughs> Did you just fight? Yeah, I just fought. That's why I still got this ice, trying to make sure that my nose don't blow up. When did you start boxing? I just started boxing a couple years ago, man. I was in Puerto Rico, and I just loved watching Floyd, and Floyd made it look so easy. And then I started training, and I realized it ain't easy. He's just that good. He makes it look easy. But once I got into it, man, I couldn't stop because that savage in me said, yeah, this is this is for you. Don't let them break your nose. You're right, man. I got to get slicker and craftier, man. I got to work that jab quicker. Get them out of there. Every fight I've had, I won by unanimous decision or in some cases their corner threw in the towel. So, you know, I'm winning um, decidedly. I'm winning in a very clear way. But this last one, it, it was not a painless win. Like there was definitely some pain involved. 
I want to get into it, but I'm already in my mid twenties. Motherfucker, I started when I was 30. Like, come on, man. No excuses out here. Let's get it. Warrior, salute, King. Church. Trade and war stories. Facts. Are you in North Kakalaki? I haven't been to the land of sweet tea in quite some time. I'm 24 and hit the boxing gym. Whether you fight or not, it's still great to do. Agreed. And there's nothing wrong with learning how to throw a great punch, right? Even if you don't compete. Can you can you turn that, uh, move that back a little bit? Even if you don't compete, when you learn how to throw that punch, let somebody talk up in a bar. What people don't realize is the power that a boxer puts into a punch is magnitude stronger than what a layman or what a civilian puts into a punch. So you can be significantly smaller than a civilian. And when you throw that straight punch at them with proper form, oh man, you're you going to crush them. So there, it's a beautiful thing. Every man should learn a little something about throwing hands. Show us your hands, bro. My hands are fine. My hands are fine. I just got a, a, a few scabs on my hands, but, but my hands are fine. Right, I'm 26. Whenever I can, I'll try to sign up for classes, as you should. How can I tap into my ar arrogance? I don't know. Either it's there or it's not, bro. Uh, you got to believe in yourself. The funny thing is, you know, I'm from Southern California. L.A. cats is just cocky. You hear me? L.A. cats, New York cats, man, they just swagged out. That's just how they are. Damn, you know how to channel the lion within. Yeah, that's true. But you know what? I feel disappointed because I feel like I'm not mean enough in the fights. I need to be more mean. I really need somebody to fuck with my head. That's why I enjoyed the coach because he was talking some wild shit to me before the fight. He was getting me vicious and I like that. But I need a nigga in the corner who's going to be telling me like, you need to die in there. You need to kill or you need to die from suicide. You need to fight to death. That's what I need. So I need to be mean or I'm not vicious enough. Yeah. And the key is when you have high standards, you always perform better than you thought. I want you guys to raise your standards. That's the key to life. There have been many times, look, after this fight, I told Bridget, you know, I feel terrible. I'm not sure if it's from disappointment, my own disappointment. I'm not sure if it's from getting hit hard or if it's from dehydration or the weight loss and the fatigue. She said probably a combination of all of them, but I'm damn sure my disappointment in myself added to the pain. Real psychological torment, because when you're a winner, you want to win decidedly. You know what I'm saying? You want to win clearly. You don't want to get hit. You want the performance to look like a masterpiece. You heard me? A spar is a fight. A lot of times when people spar in the gym, it's generally more vicious than you would spar in a sanctioned match. So never go in thinking sparring is just going to be light. It always turns vicious as soon as somebody get hit hard. Can we watch the fight? I'll get a little bit of clips together. We'll get a little something together. How was the fight? It, it was tough. It was my, my toughest fight, I guess I say. Your metabolism worsens, not eating. Agreed. Everything worsens. I'm not going to lose that much um, weight again. You a bitch-ass nigga in a homo, Marquette. <laughs> this guy is great. This guy. Hey, I appreciate the hate. Thought be gone. Clearly, you're following me just to hate. And I appreciate that. that was you're, to you're. In, I know these guys are funny. They don't realize I love them. It's, it's free marketing. Nothing better. It adds up to my subscriber count. So I appreciate you. Do me a favor, my hater. Go ahead and thumbs down this video. Just go ahead. Just go ahead and thumbs that motherfucker down, baby. Thumbs that bitch down. And I want you to go home. And when you're you're beating your meat at home while you're alone, just remember the girl that you're thinking about while you beating your meat. I fucked a bitch just like that tons of them. While you're beating your meat thinking about a bad bitch, just know I spent most of my life fucking these bad bitches. You can only imagine when you're jacking off to Pamela Henderson. You heard me? And when you're at home and when you get depressed after you finish beating your meat, you little nerd, I want you to remember the big homie is about to take off this custom jalaba, hop in the shower, go get a massage. I'm going to fly back to Vegas and then I'm going to wait. What are we waiting for that's going to be delivered? A Rolls Royce. I'm going to just wait at home for my antique Rolls Royce to be delivered. And I want you to sit at home while you're hating and think, that nigga's at home waiting for an antique Rolls Royce to be delivered, and he's in the process of hiring a bad bitch to drive him around. 
Just add that to the shit you're hating on. And remember this about the big homie Marquette Devon Burton, sucker. I only tell you about one third of what I actually do, just so you can hate only on that one third. If you actually had a real idea of the shit I really do, boy, you'd be suicidal, man. So, hey, I appreciate it. Thought be gone. Thank you for the hating. I just want to repeat his comment just to honor you. The hater thought be gone says, you a bitch ass nigga and a homo, Marquette. Now, my dear brother, why would you accuse me of being a homo? A lot of cats wish I was homo because I didn't mess around and fuck they bitch. I might have fucked this bitch on accident. I apologize. I don't do that anymore. And I advise you guys not to fuck people's bitches. It's dangerous. Thought be gone. Appreciate you showing up. If there's ever anything I can do for you, let me know. I hope you use me as your personal motivation. I hope you, you see Marquette Devon Burton and you think, man, I should give me a Rolls Royce like Marquette. I should give me a bad bitch. You know, this bitch that's driving my Rolls Royce, I'm going to probably have her call me Massa. You heard me off some slave shit just, to, just for historical irony purposes. But thank you for pulling up with the hate. Pain is weakness leaving the body, no doubt. How was the fight? It was excellent. Achilles surgery without anesthesia. How? No, I didn't say without anesthesia. I said without pain medication, meaning when you're healing from Achilles surgery, they give you a lot of pain medication. I thought it was just for pain, but it's not only for pain, it's also to reduce inflammation. Because I was Spartan in mentality, I didn't take the pain medication. I got a lot of uh, inflammation, which uh, caused scar tissue, and it reduced my uh, range of motion because I didn't know. Now I know. I would have taken it had I known that. I thought it was just for the pain. So what I'm saying is after the Achilles surgery, I didn't take any pain medication, which is, is very uncommon, as you can imagine. Appreciate the message, brother. Relevant to my own personal struggles right now. Good. When you're struggling, know that all this is doing is giving you a great story to tell when you succeed. That's what struggle is about. If you've read the black box, you'll find out my life started out really rocky, really bumpy. That's why it's a good book, because it's a story of triumph. You cannot triumph if you haven't been through struggle. Everyone goes through struggle. Every rich Jewish guy, every person with white privilege, everyone born rich, everyone has struggle. I don't care where, what situation you were born in. If you're a human being, you have struggled. There's no excuses. I don't care if you're black, white, blue. I don't want you blaming shit on racism. I don't want you blaming shit on white supremacy. I don't want you blaming things on being born poor, ugly, fat, stupid, being born, born an orphan. Yeah, none of your excuses are good enough. I'm here to tell you, you still got the goods. You can still win. Wisdom tooth, damn, that's gangster. Tooth pain gets your attention. Yes, it does. Are you good? Oh, Millie, it's good to see your face. I'm great. I'm fantastic. I won. I couldn't ask for anything else. You look tired. Yeah, I probably am tired. I'm probably fatigued, tired, dehydrated the whole night. But there's nothing like victory, and that will sustain me. Brother, I'm new to your channel. I love the content. It's both factual and realistic. I was talking to the young homies about being successful as a man, not putting women before God purpose. God and purpose. Yeah, absolutely. You, you got to keep your purpose as your primary focus. And when you keep your purpose as your primary focus, a good woman will help you achieve your purpose. Good women are driven to push you forward. You got to give them a good plan and a program, and they will execute it. Appreciate the support, Confidential. Keandre, hell yes. Bro, something missing with you. I don't lie. Seeing you like this, bro, you're a role model. Get well. Truly appreciate that, Saint. I am well. I couldn't. like As long as I won, there, there's, nothing, there's nothing better than me. As long as I won, that's it. That's the only thing I need as long as I want. It is the only thing that matters. Ain't nothing sweeter than victory. Jordan S. Weller, congrats on the win. PM, truly appreciate the support, Saint. Appreciate the super chat. Darlene writes, what's equivalent to the sweet science boxing for a woman? Because the video got me so pumped and motivated, but I can't fathom getting hit to the head like that. Darlene, you're right. You should not box. In fact, I want to tell you of a, a small tragedy I observed today. I'm not going to lie to you. I have a keen eye. And there were three female matches today. And in one of the matches, there was undoubtedly a transgender individual who was boxing a female. 
<clears throat> and clearly the transgender individual, AKA a grown male pretending to be a female, this person beat the shit out of that woman. And so like, there's still a lot of funny stuff with the LGBTQ folks going into women's sports and it's unfortunate. So I highly recommend you don't box. I don't think it's necessarily a great pursuit for a female. What's equivalent to the sweet science? Well, there are many ways to push yourself to a limit. Going on a 15 mile run, running a marathon, running an ultra marathon. There are many ways to push yourself to the limit. And here's when you know you got to the limit. When you're asking yourself, will this kill me? Am I dying? Am I gonna survive? When you're really convinced that you might die, that's when you're in the right place. That's where you're, that's where you wanna be. So Darlene, find a pursuit that will take everything out of you. And that will be the pursuit that's equivalent to the sweet science. Because at the end of that third round, after getting hit hard, after giving out all my energy, after being dehydrated and just pushing, when I got out of that ring, damn, I'd won. But I was thinking, holy shit, nobody say anything to me. Don't talk loud around me. Don't touch me. Stay back. Bridget, fuck you. I don't want a picture. Fuck everybody. Just give me my space. You know I don't mean fuck you. It's a figure of speech. Calm down. Don't look at me like that. Um, but it had taken everything from me. And what I love about the sweet science is you don't just win. You got to take the win. You heard me? Just like old boy said in the movie 300, he said, take from them everything and give them nothing. And that's what you try to do in a boxing match. You try to take everything from your opponent, take their energy, take their soul, take their spirit, break them down physically, break them down mentally and give them nothing. Give them no weakness. Give them no indication that you're tired. Just keep going to war with them. That is your job. Do you think every man should do boxing? No, probably not. There was actually a young man who, who was uh, fighting at uh, the 200 pound weight and he was in my locker room before it and I had high hopes for him. I chatted with him a little bit before he went in. Uh, his record was seven. <clears throat> it was seven and five, which is not the best record. There's nothing wrong with losing, right? Nothing wrong with losing. I'm not familiar with it, but there's nothing wrong with losing. So his record was seven and five. He went into the, the match and I went out to watch his fight. And when I watched this fight, he wasn't being aggressive. He's 6'3", six, 6'4", six, big guy, strong guy. He was bigger than the guy he was fighting, but he wasn't aggressive. He wasn't an animal. He didn't have that meanness in him. And so when I was watching him lose the match, I was thinking, God damn, he's not losing because he don't have the tools. He got everything. God blessed him with everything, genetics, height, strength, but he didn't have the mindset. He wasn't a savage. Then when I saw him back in the locker room, when I start warming up, I'm covered in sweat. I ain't even fucking went out to fight. I look like I didn't just had a fight. He's like, hey, man, like, what do you think? Because his, his, his trainer obviously ain't talking that shit. His trainer don't know what the fuck is what. So he's like, hey, man, what do you think? He asked me. I think he probably just saw I was an intense person. I say, I watched your fight. I'm not going to bullshit you. You didn't throw enough fucking punches. You waiting on another guy to throw a punch. This is boxing. You going to wait on him to fucking hit you? Nah, you need to be more aggressive. You got the size, the muscle, the strength, the height. You have to use it. And guess what? I saw you get hit hard one time and then you threw some boop, 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 boop. Then you threw something at him nasty. But you have to wait for him to hit you. You got to think like a killer. It's kill or be killed. You don't wait for him to hit you because in this sport, one hit could be the last hit. You got to be more aggressive, fam. He appreciated, I could tell. I wanted to tell him, get rid of your trainer. The motherfucker looked like he ain't never fought a day in his life. And he's not telling you the right thing. Because I'd have been yelling, motherfucker, do something. Goddamn, nigga, throw a punch. I'm sorry, I'm yelling in this luxury hotel. Probably about to get kicked out this bitch. And that's what Bridget be yelling during my fight. Mark, quick, throw a punch. Even though I'm a counter puncher, like I'm a natural counter puncher. But she liked that high punch output. Have you ever tried Taekwondo? I have not tried Taekwondo. Pain is life. Can't say that enough. To live is to survive. To survive is to find meaning in the suffering. Quotation from the late great Tupac Shakur. Wait, is it? That sounds like something I heard in the song. Was that Pac? No, nah, that wasn't Pac, but it's something I heard in the song. You have to let me know. I think I might just be saying that because of the photo. 
Darlene, you don't need to get into a fight to box. Just the training itself will change you in a good way. This is true. The Saint shares meaningful advice. If you go into a boxing gym and get a real trainer who trains real fighters and you ask them to train you like you're going to compete, oh, yeah, you're going to feel like you're dying on a couple days. So that's the right thing. Ball head. Jamil, you're right. I'm a ball head black bastard. Thank you for saying an irrelevant comment. Remember, the way of the assassin is to focus on things that are meaningful, primarily things that are aligned with your goals. And if you must speak a word, speak a word of love, speak a word of encouragement, or speak a word aimed at achieving your goals. To be a man speaking about meaningless things, about frivolous things, trivialities, that's very womanly. Women talk a lot. So half the things they say are not going to be like targeted on their goals or they will be gossip oriented. You cannot be like that. You should be a keen listener and speak wisdom. Speak after you have thought. Jamil, don't disappoint me, please. Represent yourself better. And make, make meaningful comments. Any martial art is get, good to get into. This is true, as long as it's a real martial art. If you're in a combat sport, do a combat sport that's oriented around real combat. In many ways, karate is not a proper combat sport because you got kids who train karate their whole life and they never actually fight. If you're a boy, you need to fight. You need to, you know, you need to take a punch or two. Um, and that's why people don't realize karate doesn't really work because they never put it to use. MMA has exposed that karate is largely fraudulent. That's why it's called MMA, mixed martial arts, which means it pulls from various disciplines. It's a fine, fine sport. I recently got introduced to your videos and I want to become a patron. Send me the link. I'd be happy to send you the link and all of the saints will be more than happy to welcome you to the assassin. So I'm going to type that in right now. www.patreon.com slash the saint and the sinner. If I've mistyped that, would one of the saints please be kind enough to provide saint with the proper URL? Okay, coming back. I just want to go through a few more of these comments and then I'm going to wind this thing down. You heard me. If you have some, some burning questions, feel free to share. What's your opinion on Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? I'm thinking about joining a gym and completing, competing. I highly recommend Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu because it's very practical. If you get into a fight out in the world, an MMA fighter is going to be more effective than a boxer, especially if things go to the ground, which they often may. The nice thing about being trained in BBJ is that it allows you to actually dominate people who are bigger than you. So if you go to the ground and someone has superior weight, you can get them into a number of holds and locks that will disable them. So I highly recommend it. It's something that I might not do until I retire. Does anger or calmness help more in a fight? Calmness by far. I've never felt angry in a fight. If you watch the best fighters, they may make a mad face, an angry face when they're throwing a mean punch, but I don't think any of them are angry. Boxing will definitely give you confidence. Facts. You look at the way an athlete walks. All of them have an aura or a swagger to their walk, but a fighter is a whole different walk because there's nothing like walking around knowing that you can fuck everybody up. That's an extreme feeling of confidence. And here's another thing. When you're a fighter and you're regularly throwing hands, you don't have time for fear. Fear is gone. Fear is gone. Every now and then a sucker like out in the world, like for a half of a second, they think they're tough. And before I became a boxer, I'm always happy to throw hands my whole life. You can check my G file my whole life. But now that I do box, I'm, I'm reluctant to fight people in the public because it's just not right. It's damn near immoral for me to fight a civilian because it's not going to be, you know, a fair fight in their case. They're going to get mashed out. So nowadays when motherfucker thinks they're tough, I tell them like, Hey man, like I'll fight motherfuckers every week. This is what I do. Like you don't really want to fight. If you do, I'm happy to fight, but I'm just letting you know that like, this is something I practice. So like you might just want to cool the fuck out. You hear me? I'm about to take a box and I'm 27. Go ahead, man. Do your thing, Saint. Anger doesn't help. Composure and intent. I couldn't, I couldn't say anything truer. That's right. Kill or be killed. 
You got to take your victory. This is not a game. Yeah, I was thinking about that, but it's still a good motivator to practice boxing. Correct. Bro, I don't know how to send questions, but what do you think of being in the streets? Is it not worth it? Get out of the streets. There are a lot of legitimate opportunities. Kareem, is there any way we can watch your fights? Yes, I, I think I got past fights on, uh, on my Instagram. You should check out the book, Iron Ambition by Mike Tyson. Mike is the man. Why not? Rare moment when I can catch a stream from the UK. Absolutely. I hopped on here good and early. So I'm, I'm glad that you are able to, to catch this stream, folks. Let's see what else we got here. Yeah, people catching the, the live for the first time. What's your boxing record? Undefeated. Anger is not consistent enough. When you reach a certain level, it holds you back. Absolutely. Uncontrolled emotion is the enemy of performance. What was the hardest round? It was the last round because I defeated myself. In the last round, I maybe the judges gave me the last round. I'm very hard on myself. But I feel like I defeated myself because I was exhausted in the last round. That's why I say suicide or homicide. Can you take this? And it was, it was suicide in the last round because I fought till exhaustion. I defeated myself. He didn't have more skill than me. He just kept on. He stayed strong. He was an AMS fanboy. That's correct. He probably was an AMS fanboy. And what people don't realize is that AMS, sure, he's a nice guy, but he don't love you like I love the Saints. It's just not factual. I love the Saints in that I invest time in thinking and organizing. People get on my Patreon. It's not just to get exclusive video content. There's a lot of that, but it's also to put you in a community. I pay for an additional website out of my own money so you can go and get resources there, so you can connect to other people. I pay for things to help you that I don't make anything out of. I organize you guys so that you can have smart goals meetings to pursue your goals. How does that make me wealthier? It doesn't. I do it because I care about you being successful. I want to hear you win. You heard me? And if, if I can answer a question from one of my patrons, even at the lowest level when I have the time, I, I try to do it. Now, granted, for the most time, I don't have the time. The best way to get a one-on-one -on -one with me is to do a consultation, and I try to make them affordable. Anyone else in my position would not do a consultation at that price, but I do it because I really do care. And I know a lot of the saints since that, and I, I appreciate that you guys appreciate me. Uh, the one hater that we had in here. I also appreciate him, e even though he doesn't realize it. Lily McD writes, okay, I I know, I okay, not sure what that means, but shout out to the ladies who show up. We always appreciate that. Appreciate the super chat from Corey Ganey writes, been having a problem staying motivated. I can kick it in gear, but not sustain over time. Any tips? None of my friends are motivated or on the same path. Listen closely, saints. He said his friends are fucking losers. Yeah, sorry to put it that bluntly, but we don't have time to bullshit you. Your friends are fucking losers. You need to get some more friends, buddy. Put them on limited association. It's better to be alone than to be around losers because losers think loser shit. They say loser shit. They behave in loser ways. They will drag you down with that energy. Eagles don't hang out with pigeons. So if you look around and see a bunch of pigeons, you might be a pigeon. huh? If you want to be an eagle, you need to get those pigeons from around you. Put them on limited association. And remember this, motivation might not stick around. May I have some more ice there? I need, I need to get this nose together. L motivation might not stick around, but discipline sticks around. I've been going to the gym every day for so long. Every day, at least once. Sometimes twice a day. Sometimes three times a day. When I walk in there, half the time, I don't even feel like it. But when I get in there, I feel at home. I feel safe. I feel happy and comfortable. It's a safe space for a man like me because I know that this is home. This is where I come to. This is going to build me stronger. It's discipline. I don't feel like going, but it's all I know. I've been going to the gym so fucking much, my body starts to ache and hurt if I don't go to the gym. Because I'm used to working it out and loosening it up, working it out hard and stretching it out. My body starts to ache if I don't have it. It's discipline. I'm a robot. Discipline are the things you do regularly, whether you want to or not. You don't need motivation because you do it so much. It's just a part of who you are. Motivation ain't going to always be there. I'm not going to lie to you. 
and tell you you're going to want to go to the gym every day? Hell nah. But what you got to do is play with yourself mentally. See, I like to, when I don't want to go to the gym, I look around and I see somebody's stomach hanging over their belt. And I get disgusted. I look around, I see a man's arm exposed and I see there's no definition on the arm. And I think, ah, that can never be me. I look at my Instagram. People think that I post Instagram videos of me working out to get women or to impress women, which you don't realize I'm a fucking psychopath. I post me working out on Instagram so I can look at myself in disgust because I'm not fit enough. I'm not ripped enough. I'm not fast and strong enough. Yeah, that's why I post it. And you'll see videos eventually disappear because I'm getting stronger and faster. And I want to post the latest shit to keep myself going. Laugh my ass off. He just is like, nice. I love that he followed directions. <laughs> right. AMS is full of shit. <laughs> oh, my God. It's the saint in the center in the flesh. Talk that shit, pimping. I can't do nothing but talk it. The hater going to be a school shooter because of this lie. <laughs> You're right, man. And when it's our time to go... Go with a smile. If that hater busting this bitch right now with a Uzi and he told me, Marquette, say one more thing and I'm shooting. I'm like, nigga, suck my dick. And I say it with a smile and take that bullet. You heard me? Because the thing is, when you are who you are, you're going to stay consistent. These haters going to hate. You can't ever let a hater knock you off of your square. You can't let a hater take you out of your spirit. My spirit is of love. It's of caring. It's of giving. It's of happiness. It's of hard work. And that stays consistent. Whether people are hating or not, I know I got a job to do. I'm going to go in this boxing ring and knock them all fuck out. I'm going to try to. My, I, I'm going to stay on my job. When you fight so much, you become emotionless and just aim for the win. I always want the win. I left the streets, but I've been thinking about going back to hustling every day. I know, I know you think it's best to just cut off everybody and work a new life. I'm kind of stuck. Look, you have to be who you are, number one, and you got to find things that work for you. If you know something's not right for you or you know people are not right for you, you need to make a decision. You have to think of the people around you as a house. And if those people are toxic, that house is burning and you must run out of that house. When you make changes in your life, they don't have to be incremental. The change can be absolute. The change can be quick. Life moves very fast. In my mind, I was 16 just yesterday. In my mind, I was in high school just yesterday asking myself how I could slay the prettiest girl in school. That's how fast time moves. You understand? Do not delay. The master Sun Tzu says haste can be folly, but delay is never wise. Do what you know needs to be done. Roasted the fuck out of him. Absolutely. Muay Thai is the best martial art, in my opinion. Science of the eight limbs. <laughs> the most important. Are you young enough to risk sitting down for five years? I agree. And this is good advice that the gentleman is giving you. Time is precious. When you engage in illegal activities that will land you incarcer in incarceration, you know, that, that's not a good look, my dear brother. I encourage you to join the assassin so that you might find positive influence and a good support system. And you can listen to the SMART goals meeting because sometimes you might not have your own grand design. You might not have found your purpose. I tell you that it's a good thing to listen to other people's plans, listen to other people's goals. You might copy it. Because when you start out, you copy, you mimic until you can create something of your own. Further, it's important to know that having the wrong goal and pursuing the wrong goal is much better than pursuing no goal. Don't sit on your ass doing nothing. Says he should become a part of the assassin. I respect the knowledge. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Everyone should become a part of the assassin if they can understand the way of the assassin and live by the way of the assassin. Did you pull the trigger on the Rolls Royce Corniche? Also, what year? Gates, I actually didn't get the Corniche, which is the Rolls Royce antique convertible. It is a gorgeous automobile. But 
The problem with the Corniche and a lot of antique convertibles is that the mechanism to retract the top gets damaged. Um, and so it, it doesn't work. Even if you spend money to restore it, it's just a very fragile component. So I decided not to go with the convertible. I got some whole other shit. But what I did get has the tray tables in the back, you dig? So God willing, you see me back there, um, you know, eating Bridget and I having some rolled tacos. One of my guilty pleasures, rolled tacos, you dig? What people don't realize is your boy is damn near Mexican, you heard me? I grew up in Southern California. My mom cooked up a mean carne asada. My mom makes salsa from scratch. You dig? Your response to the hater is gold. Absolutely, because I love haters, and I've been dealing with them my whole life. And the reason I've been dealing with haters my whole life is because I've been winning my whole life. And that's why I tell you guys that be thoughtful about who you get advice from. AMS might be a great guy. Fantastic gentleman. Corey Wayne might be a fantastic gentleman. But these guys are like nerds turned into pickup artists. I was always winning. Check my G file, boy. In elementary school, I was the guy. Middle school, I was the guy. President of the middle school. Heart throb in, in uh, high school. Voted best dress. Voted best smile. Voted all the shit you want to be. Which is to say, I didn't have to do a transformation. I didn't have to read books on how to be cool. Motherfucker, I've always been cool. So when you get something from somebody that's in their blood, they breathe it out. They don't have to ponder to read a book, which means you're getting the genuine article. A guy like AMS or Steph is cold or all these other guys, and shout out to Steph is cold. I love the young lion. But all these guys, they're reading books written by people like me, or they're reading books about people like me. And I don't say that to be arrogant. I say that to be factual. I've been winning my whole damn life. Will you post the fight? Yeah, we post some footage. Hey, you I respect boxing, but fuck that shit. I'm going to stick to basketball. Not trying to get knocked the fuck out. You're right. Know your lane. Know your game. As I always say, be who you are. You're wise not to try to be someone else. Homie in killer mode just got the prey apex predator. Women should not support the alphabet people. Agree. Agree. I'm 25, two kids with two baby moms. Jumped off a road beginning at 19. Man, I didn't really have no one to chat to about serious stuff. Bless up, respect. And now you do. And that's why we're putting together this community because there is a tremendous emptiness in the society today. You go to your church and they tell you to pray on it, but they don't give you strategy. They don't give you a support system. Same thing in your masjid or in your temple. They don't check in on you every week to say, how are your goals going? What are you doing? And they don't hold you accountable to say, hey, you're smart, you're intelligent, you're good looking, you're tall, you're strong. You got everything working for you. You must achieve more. That's what I'm here to tell you. I don't accept you not winning. I only want to be around winners. So that's why I'm going to encourage you guys to go harder. What foods do you personally recommend but taste good? Up, oh, we already lost. See, you're a man. It don't need to taste good. It don't need to taste good. So like once you get past to that part, then holla at me. What do you think about magic spells and rituals? Oh, shit. Um, I'm not familiar with that, David. The respect is real. Appreciate that. These hard times remind me of Stefan Arino. RIP anyways. Take this. I'm not familiar with that. I'm a boxer, so this shit is facts. L, appreciate that. Shout out to all the fighters. Shout out to all the savages. Shout out to all the hard men. Shout out. Because look, anybody that gets in that boxing ring is a warrior. I don't care if you won or lost. You're a warrior just for stepping in there. Because here's the thing. If you're a football player, basketball player, baseball player, i go try your sport out, no problem. But you'd be scared to try mine out. You don't even want a taste of it. You heard me? So shout out to all the hard men. Shout out to the men working on being harder because this is a journey. Super chatted. What foods do you personally recommend but taste good? I can tell you, Saint, that the truth is when you really want something, you forget about the low priority things. When you want to be in excellent shape, when you want to cut weight, you will do anything that it takes. You will eat sardines whether you like them or not. If you've ever eaten sardines, they smell terrible. They stink. 
I can't even eat them in public because it's embarrassing. I also eat rice crackers. They have no flavor. They taste like cardboard. Nothing tastes good that's going to help you cut weight for the most part, right? And you know what you're going to be eating the most of? Air. You're not going to be eating shit. You're going to be fasting. When you cut weights, you're going to be eating motherfucking air, my guy. And that tastes horrible. You're going to be tasting emptiness in your stomach. And the only thing in your stomach and your heart that's going to fill you up is willpower. This is not a game, dear brother. So I want you to take what I'm saying. I don't want you to feel like I'm skipping your question. I'm just telling you that it takes a whole different level. You can't be like average people. You're not going to get extraordinary outcomes taking average actions. This is an extraordinary thing to cut weight. And I do want to tell you, I suffered cutting weight and I suffered before the match. I suffered during the match. I suffered after the match. I'm never going to cut that much weight again. So I'm going to tell you right now, if you're going to cut weight at most, cut four pounds. Do not. That's if you're in elite shape. I was in elite shape before I started cutting weight. I didn't have any fat on my body. So if you're in elite shape, do not cut more than four pounds, please. Too much pain. Kareem Glows right. does Bridget have an Instagram? Kareem, trip out on this, Saint. I don't even know Bridget's Instagram. I'm not friends with Bridget on Facebook. Trip out on that. I know Bridget personally. I see Bridget every day. I don't even care about her Instagram. I don't even care about her Facebook. Kareem, please study the way of the assassin, my dear brother. Saint, these irrelevant things will not drive you forward. And also, I always tell guys, don't worry about that which might belong to another man. It will only cause you danger and heartache. Oh, wait, Bill writes, I'm homeless, but I'm on my way back. Thanks for the words of wisdom. I needed that. Victor is mine. Shout out, my saint. Shout out. My guy is homeless. You're in the perfect position. Only place to go is up. I've been homeless. You heard me? I've been homeless. Not off of some couch surfing, like staying on my friend's couch. I'm talking about literally homeless. I've been there, bruh. Shout out to you. Go hard. Don't take any pity on yourself and tell a great story once you get back on. I remember, man, when I was homeless, I went to in and out My last bit of money, I had to count out the change. I had to calculate the tax because if it went over a certain amount, I couldn't afford it. And I had to count it out and I couldn't even afford to get the French fries animal style. It was my last little bit of money. And I think it's like maybe 65 cents or something like that to get them animal style. I can't remember, but I didn't have the, the coins to, to do that. And I'll never forget that. I will never forget being at rock bottom like that. And when you've been at rock bottom, your hustle is different. So you're in a beautiful place. Everyone who's read that, he says he's homeless. Send that saint some support. Send him a shout out. But look, don't take pity or mercy on him. And don't take pity or mercy on yourself. Keep grinding. Keep a positive mentality. Terrence Needham writes, man, be thirsty for Bridget. You're sad. Like that's, I preach against this. I preach against like inquiring on things that are irrelevant. I'm only interested in what she looks like, guys. I have a girlfriend. What does it matter what she looks like if you have a girlfriend, Saint? Trip on this. It doesn't even matter what I look like. You heard me? None of this matters, Saint. Lewis writes, who's the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter right now in your opinion? Canelo? Hell nah. Canelo, watch Canelo versus Floyd Mayweather. Man, Canelo got body. He didn't even look like a professional fighter. He looked like a really, really good amateur fighter. So I definitely don't think it's Canelo. Not saying that there's anything wrong with taking a loss. Is Canelo top five? Absolutely. Canelo nasty. But is he like the best pound for pound? Nah, I couldn't, I couldn't say that. I couldn't even say that. Let's see what we got here. Marquette hyped up per usual. Energy is everything. When you have strong energy, you're going to notice people circle around you because the world is devoid of energy. People need energy. That's why people circle around you because they want to they get some of that. It's 24 years old to start learning the sweet science. 
Hell nah, nigga, uh, 84 ain't too old to start learning the sweet science. Come on, fam. If you want to do something, do it. Are you not listening? Are you not learning Marquettism? If you want to do it, do it. Just like Nike said, just do it. Is this stream only about boxing or can I ask questions? I appreciate that. Saint, very respectful. Yeah, go ahead and ask your question. Oh, man. It's hard to read some of the questions. Um, if I missed your super chat, would you please uh, type it in again? Sardi, truly appreciate the super chat, Saint. Thank you for showing love to those who show love to you. I'm actually getting hot in here talking this shit. Get me hot. Um, now nah, the heater's not on, is it? Got you, got you. Look, Saints, I think I'm wrapped up. I just wanted to hop on here and give you guys a little bit of inspiration and let you know that hell is on the way to heaven. If you're traveling to heaven, you're pursuing success, hell is on the way. So don't be scared. Know that it's coming. You hear me? And take it with a smile. A champion takes adversity with a smile. You hear me? So no matter what is happening, and, and appreciate, I truly appreciate that tough man because David Goggins is a savage. My one criticism of David Goggins is why you don't fight. You hear me? A lot of people don't fight because they don't want to get knocked out or they don't want to like get laid down. Anybody could run. Now, David Goggins runs ultra marathons. We're talking like 100 miles, 200 miles, crazy stuff, which I'm sure any of us could do if we got that mentality. So shout out to Goggins because ain't none of us on that level. I ain't going to lie to you. But from a boxing mentality, I'm like, well, why my man don't fight? If he's so raw, if he's so vicious, why he don't fight? I love to see Goggins throw some hands. You heard me? Um, and it's funny, too, because when you listen to Goggins, he talks about Rocky and the Rocky movie really inspiring him. He talks about when Rocky kept getting beat and going down and getting up. I thought, well, if you love Rocky that much, how come you ain't throwing no hands, fam? Makes me wonder. So Goggins, if you listen it, the same the center, Marquette Devon Burton, has challenged you to, to pick up that sweet signs. You heard me? Please, sir, is it stupid of me? To not be in a relationship with a girl I really don't like, but who is ready to give me anything, or should I stay aside? If you don't want her, you don't want her. But the pimp and I always tell you, you get the most out of, woman that, out of a woman that wants you. And you heard me say a million times, love those who love you. You heard me? Carrying on. What's Marquette's Insta? I'll type that in the chat for you guys who don't have me on Instagram. Instagram.com slash Marquette Devon is my Instagram. I got to see the workouts. I, I record very few of my workouts con considering how much I actually work out. And look, another thing you guys got to remember, if you want to be successful in something, yes, I'm arrogant, but I'm also humble at the same time. I'm not going to lie to you and pretend as though like my nose did not get bloodied. You can see that it's sw swollen. I'm not going to lie to you and pretend as though I didn't get hit. And that's why a guy like me who actually goes out and fights people in the public is different than a Goggins, right? Like you ain't, you ain't going to never see Goggins with a bloody nose or busted lip because Goggins ain't going in that kind of fire. You see what I'm saying? So there's a vulnerability to people who fight. And that's why people hated Floyd because when you're winning, all they want to see is you lose because it makes them feel better about themselves. So I know my hater, the hater who was on here earlier, he loved for me to be on here talking about how I ca caught an L. But what he doesn't realize is that even if I did catch an L, which I didn't, I would still feel like a champ. Because just to get in that boxing ring is victory enough. You've already proven yourself to be a warrior doing something that most men are scared to do. I used to take pictures of myself at the gym for the same reasons. You, you're a funny guy. I like that. Amen. What's up with the ice? I just got on here reading the black box now. Michael, truly appreciate the support, Saint. The ice is because I just got out of a boxing match, which I won by unanimous decision, but it was it was a vicious one. It hurt. AMS is clowning for super chat donations and views. True story. I don't know how my comment got up there. I'm trying to look out for everybody. I'm posting up stuff even when people aren't super chatting because I'm trying I'm trying to look out. And I don't want to devalue the people who are super chatting. How do I build confidence? 
I think I have a video on that on patreon.com slash the saint and the sinner. How was the fight? The fight was great. Box or kickbox, do what you love. I prefer the sweet science. And if you go far in it, boxing pays far more than kickboxing or anything else. The highest paid athlete in the world, boxer. Is it possible to be a godly man and participate in combat sports? I believe it is. In fact, I believe that nature requires the man to engage in war. Matthew 1034 in the Bible, Jesus writes, if you think I've come here to bring peace, I have not. I have come here to bring the sword. In the Quran, it talks about jihad, which is not necessarily war externally. It's mostly meaning holy war internally, struggle against the self. What's a greater struggle than boxing? Both of those sacred texts talk about the sword, fighting, boxing, struggle. So absolutely. They also talk about being a protector. How can you be a protector if you don't throw hands? I'm just curious. Domas writes, how and when should a pimp ask a woman to become a hoe and give him 100% of her income? Number one, you have to make sure that she has it in her. Number two, you have to build the rapport, the relationship, and then she will give you 100% when she's ready to, but you always have to demand 100%. Can't be anything less. Anthony Garcia writes, so you're going to give me a ride in the roll, Saint. Pull up on me. It's possible. All right. By the way, have you ever heard of Owen Cook? He was a former pickup artist. No, sir. Have never heard of him. Tajane writes, good evening, everyone. That's a beautiful thing. I always encourage the saints to greet one another with love, especially when you see one another in person. It was so nice to see the saint at my boxing match who I don't know if he knew I was going to be there or what the case is, but I greeted him with love humbleness, humility, and love. And I always expect you all to do that to one another. Greet one another like family. Marquette, do you ever worry about head slash brain trauma? No, no. And if I get brain trauma, take me out back and shoot me like a dog because I'm done. Hey, I'm going hard. I'm going hard. I've already lived enough life. If I drop dead right now, I've already outperformed everybody I grew up with. I've already achieved my bucket list. Yeah. So I'm going to live as a lion. I'd rather live one day as a lion than a whole lifetime as a lamb. Emily writes, what would be the main benefit to a woman to become a Patreon member to the saint and the sinner? Emily, that's a great question. So if I'm being honest with you, it would be to join the assassin. And what we always try to do is empower people who join. Emily, so if you did join, I'd really want to engage with you. And I would encourage you to join the Saints Council. The Saints Council is like the leadership organization within the Sassin. And we create the programming for the sainthood. And what I would want you to help us do is record, recruit more women in. Because what we're teaching is positive values and mentality. We not only need to teach this to men, but we also need to teach this to women and help create lessons, create programs that are going to help women live better lives and be good spouses to worthwhile men. So I would encourage you to do that to get closer. You know, come in at the entry level, reach out to me and join that Saints Council. And I appreciate you asking that question, Emily. Love. Saint, the conference is January 28th and 29th, right? And the time schedule. That's correct. The conference has been announced on Patreon. And the reason that I only put it on Patreon exclusively is because there's only 300 tickets. And for those who have been showing love on a consistent basis, I would hate for them to not have the chance to purchase a ticket. On Monday, we're going to release tickets to YouTube, which is 29,000 people. So they're going to sell out relatively quickly, probably. So I, I would encourage you to get the ticket early so that you don't have to hope that you can get one later. And I'm telling you, it's 300. There will not be more than 300 attendees. There will not be more than 300 tickets. There will be no exceptions for like, hey, let me volunteer. There will be none of that. Um, so get your tickets. It's going to be an excellent experience. It's going to be like, you know, we're going to address all parts of the human being. It's leadership focus. We're going to address the body, the spirit. We're going to address relationships, romantic relationships, familial relationships. We're going to focus on you being your best. And we're going to go out Saturday night and turn up all 300 of us. Have a good time. So it'll be something that you will remember. So I invite all of the saints to uh, get their conference ticket on patreon.com if you're already a part of it. 
Um, the remaining tickets that will be released on YouTube uh, via the community tab will occur Monday. You'd be wise to get them uh, early. You know exactly what you're talking about. I've trained in both disciplines and you remind me much of myself, brother. I appreciate that, Saint. Much respect to you, sir. I just started following recently. Your knowledge is much appreciated. What are the ways of the assassin? I seek mentoring. Joshua, uh, within the assassin, which you would join at patreon.com slash the saint of the center, saint in the center, we'll, we will share an exclusive website that has all of our philosophy, our way of life, rather, I should say, written out. And when you join, there's a new member orientation where they literally tell you what the assassin is about, what we believe in, and we find out what you are seeking in your life and we help you achieve your goals. Literally today, there is a new member education going on at 7 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. Exactly. No one makes content on the guy who always had it. I'm in this space because I can relate, not because I'm unfamiliar. Appreciate that, God fearing King. My man's caught the fade. Absolutely. What books do you recommend on reading and implementing to real life? The Black Box is the most practical book out there. Literally, after every chapter, there's a black box and it talks directly to you and tells you very clearly how to apply it to your life. If someone's seen a, a book more practical than the black box that tells you, do this, let me know and I will be happy to recommend it. In today's society, nobody really teaches you how to save yourself. Thanks for teaching us to find our way. Jeremy, you speak truth. I appreciate you for acknowledging the verity of what I do share. First, hello, Marquez. Second, how can I make money being just 18 and living in a country like Puerto Rico? Actually, I used to live in Puerto Rico. I used to live in Condado and uh, also in Santurce. I used to play basketball down there. That's where I learned how to box. Uh, man, I can't say enough good things about Puerto Rico. You got to remember, my dear brother, Puerto Rico has some of the most educated people with the lowest cost of living. In a public bus in Los Angeles, you're going to pay like $1.50 to get around. In a public bus in Puerto Rico, <clears throat> I want to say I pay like 50 cents to get around. So that itself is a major advantage. You have quite a deep question that we'd have to really chop it up about. But let me tell you, in Puerto Rico, you have an American passport. You have a great advantage over someone who lives in Somalia. Think about your assets. Focus on that. <clears throat> I need to eat. You're correct. Saints. Let us end this in the right way. Let me pull up the Creed of the Assassin. And before I go, let me acknowledge Just Living. Right? How do you retain the most information? You read it, you write it, you recite it, and you repeat the three R's. Read, write, recite. I know write doesn't start with an R, but the three R's. Read, write, recite. Do that three times. It will help you retain. Thank you for the super chat. Jordan writes, congrats on the win, Pimp. Appreciate that. Abdullah, thank you for the super chat. Now, let us end with the creed of the assassin. Wherever you are in the world, I want you to say this with passion. I want you to say this and allow this to be your daily mental nourishment. Say this with conviction, knowing that this is true of you. Repeat after me. <clears throat> the creed of the assassin. I'm going to be who I truly am because I am remarkable and I will strive every moment to show the greatest part of who I am. Saints, truly a pleasure to have spent this time with you. Thank you for sharing this moment with me. I hope you go out in this world and be remarkable, endure struggle with a smile, and you will make it to being very successful. I'll see you guys in Las Vegas face-to-face. -face. Peace, saints.